so if your first question is, will this video have spoilers? My answer is, you betcha. Um, so please be aware, I will give away some spoilers. Hopefully not too many, just in case, but you know, I just want to talk about this great show, uh, FX's Fargo. Um, and I never thought I'd be talking about TV shows so much, but really, TV has just changed. I mean, I've, I've gone over this over and over again, but it feels just so much more like a, a cinematic experience, um, you know, especially with, with shows based off, off movies, uh, like, like this, and, uh, Base Motel, Hannibal, etc. Um, it's, it's just a great show, and, and kind of took me by surprise, which, you know, with Joel and Ethan Cohen as executive producers on this, maybe I should have, uh, you know, not been so cautious, but uh, I, I, I've seen the first season of this show, and it is an anthology show, so it does pretty much, you know, have a beginning, middle, end, so there is a resolution, uh, and it uh, ends pretty satis satisfying, I think. Um, but really, I mean, it's like, pretty much, you could say this is, essentially, it's a, a ten-hour sequel uh, to Fargo, um, the Joel and Ethan Coen movie, um, which... Uh, I have reviewed previously, uh, I'll, if, uh, earlier, in, early in the year I did a review on it, so I'll put a link, maybe if you want to check it out, whatever, um, but yeah, uh, anyway, it, it's very loosely connected to it, uh, kind of the main thing, and I'm jumping forward here, um, but you know, there's twists and turns and connections and uh, different characters that kind of overlap with each other in, in certain stories and things like that, and um, basically, uh, one of the bridges between this and the movie is uh, the fact that there is this kind of uh, grocery store chain kingpin uh, played by Oliver Platt, who's a minor character on the show, uh, who, who kind of is connected between the characters and things like that. Um, you kind of, I think you figured out maybe like the fifth episode in, fifth or sixth ep episode, but you see that in his uh, office or whatever, there's... Uh, uh, you know, an ice scraper that's uh, framed, and and right away, I think most people kind of caught on to that. They're like, okay, did he find the money? Yes, he found the money from the first Fargo and the from the first Fargo movie. Um, you know, that Steve Buscemi, uh, uh, you know, buries off by the road and sticks the indicator there, the ice pick or the ice uh, scraper. Uh, but of course, he can't come back to it. Um, he was, you know had a important day with a wood chipper that he couldn't miss. Um, so, I mean, it's there for anybody's grab. And side note, I mean, you know, not, not to make light of it, but because the first movie kind of, as a gag, sort of um, said, this is based on a true story, blah, blah, which this show does too, I think someone actually did go looking for it somehow based on some information, and they got lost and died or something, which, you know, I, I don't know what is going on in your mind to try and find that, but whatever, I mean, that's kind of, you know, maybe it's a made-up PR story, I don't even know, um, but it, it kind of makes sense with kind of the, the themes of both this show and the movie, which is, you know, people will do crazy things for just a little bit of money, um, so, I mean, that's just an interesting aside if you didn't know that, um, but anyway, Oliver Platt's character, he, he uh, finds, um, finds the money, and that's how he's able to uh, fund his chain of grocery stores and blah 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 blah. So really, what it is, I mean, the, the story it uh, kind of stems from uh, Martin Freeman's character, uh, Lester Nygaard, who's you know a timid, uh, just regular guy. It seems he's an insurance salesman, um, and Martin Freeman is really great um, in his performance as Lester Nygaard. Um, you know, he really gets the accent down, like, he kind of, he seems sort of like the, the, the William H. Macy car salesman character, so he has, like, a kind of spirit animal thing with, with him going, uh, and the accent's is just great, you know, like, oh, yeah, 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 sure, uh-huh, oh, okay, but, you know, he's living a normal life, has a normal wife, no kids, but, uh, you know, whatever, um, but uh, it, it kind of starts going when he's being bullied by this guy from his, you know, past, his high school, whatever. He's always kind of been just a, a pushover his whole life, it seems. But then when a hitman, played by Billy Bob Thornton, Lorne Malvo, a very uh, insidious name, um, uh, so, um, they kind of cross paths. And I guess just kind of arbitrarily... Uh, Malvo kind of thinks, yeah, I'm going to help this guy out. Um, 
and he uh, murders uh, his bully. And so that kind of starts a train, chain, chain reaction uh, for Lester Ny Nygaard, um, kind of taking his life uh, by the bull by the horns, basically. Uh, what if you're right and everybody else is wrong? And so gets him into a lot of trouble, and it escalates and escalates and escalates. Um, and so you have, like, the, the, the crime story with, like, you know, some mob hits and things like that, as well as the pr police procedural elements to it, um, with some, some great uh, actors on, on that side of things as well. Um, uh, there's an actress, uh, Alison Tolman, she's playing uh, Molly, Molly, Molly whatever, Molly Sullivan, I think her name is, Solverson. Um, she's kind of like the the Marge Gunderson character, sort of. Again, there's like kind of like just reflections of certain characters where you think, okay, yeah, he reminds me of him, blah, blah, blah. Um, and Colin Hanks, uh, who's great on the show, is a policeman who would rather much be a, a mailman and stay out of trouble, uh, who's, who's very good in his role. Um, and Bob Odenkirk from Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul, uh, he's great as well. Um, and I didn't even know it was him for like the first episode, so I was like, this guy seems familiar, his voice is kind of the same, but I don't know, he like has like a cheap comb over and his hair is great, and I don't know, it's, it's really good, and, and I like that. Um, so yeah, and there's a lot going on, and, and because it is, you know, a television show, because there's a lot more room for more characters, more side stories, um, you get a better sense of kind of the larger story. I mean, they could have released this sort of as like a maybe two-hour movie or so, like a cinematic sequel to Fargo, and it would have been good, I think. Um, but because we have more time to invest in the characters and because we have so much more story that we can invest in, um, it makes it a better experience. Again, it's like a 10-hour sequel to Fargo. And talk about an embarrassment of riches, especially since, you know, it, it does very much feel Cohen-esque. I mean, they're, they're executive producers. They didn't write any of the episodes, to my knowledge, but I'm sure they had, you know, um, creative input, a, a lot of creative input, I would say, um, because it does definitely feel like a Cohen kind of movie, except, you know, they, they have developed as storytellers, I guess, so it feels uh, like kind of like next generation Fargo which which it is um, so it has the same kind of humor you can definitely there's a lot of callbacks I mean little like in jokes to people who know the movie well you'll, you'll notice a lot of things um, the one part I liked was uh, kind of the the conversation between uh, the Oliver Platt character and a uh, uh, toll booth operator which kind of reflects back on uh, the Steve Buscemi character and uh, the, the movie, uh, which I liked, and I thought that was funny. I was like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but um, uh, just a whole bunch of stuff like that. And it feels very much, it, it does have a similar feel as Fargo. I don't think it's, it, it's not, it's not the same. Uh, one of the things I liked about Fargo was because it took, you know, thriller elements and poked little holes in them, uh, kind of put little trivialities in, into the story, which I like. This isn't quite like that. Uh, it, it does feel a little bit more straighter uh, when it comes to a thriller aspect, so it does feel almost like a, a mix of of Fargo, the movie, but also of, like, No Country for Old Men or something, you know, um, which is a really cool mix um, because it's, it's a lot more scary and thrilling, sort of, in, in certain aspects, especially with uh, Billy Bob Thornton's character. Uh, who, who's he's incredible on on this show, and he he's almost kind of like uh, uh, Anton Sugar kind of character. Um, so yeah, I mean it's it's really cool, and he's really intense, and he's great. Um, seriously, I mean if 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 this show gets any Emmy love, please let it be for Billy Bob Thornton uh, for for his uh, uh, portrayal of Lauren Malvo. He is exceptional. I think this is some of the best work he's ever done. Um, and Thornton, I mean he he does kind of go under under the radar is one of the best actors working today because I, I think he can kind of sense when he's like really into something and, and when he's not sort of if that makes sense it's like yeah okay Armageddon he's you know whatever secretary of defense who cares you know ching ching um but like stuff like Bad Santa or Bandits or uh, Simple Plan uh Sling Blade Sling Blade is amazing I can't even recognize Billy Bob Thornton in, in Sling Blade he's just lost in that role what an incredible performance I mean if, if he never does another role I mean Sling Blade and this I mean those are the two best and Bad Santa Bad Santa's awesome um but I love Billy Bob Thornton and he's great in this please give him all the awards Emmy SAG Golden Globe whatever he's great in this uh really truly uh, just, just, you can tell he's, like, having a lot of fun, but also, like, really kind of deep into it, which is cool. Um, 
but yeah, and not not to take from you know Martin Freeman, Colin Hanks, and Alison Tolman or anything like that, but uh, he he's definitely the standout because it is funner, I would say, to play the bad guy um, than it is you know. Oh yeah, the nice good guy like Colin Hanks, even though Colin Hanks is great and uh, his character arc is really interesting. He's a great moment of uh, you know kind of. Uh, cowardice but then redemption so it's a really really great arc um and you know he, he gets together with the molly character and there's a romantic subplot in there which is nice um which you kind of need in a story which can kind of get intense um but yeah i mean it's it's definitely something that uh, uh they they really kind of tune together really well um showing kind of new elements of what they can tell in a story like you know, again, uh, it is like Fargo and New Country, No Country for Old Men uh, together, and it has similar aspects. Um, you know, because it it does kind of question. You know, it's 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 thrilling, it's fun, but it does kind of offer a deeper question to things. Like, have times really changed for the worse? I mean, there's so much murders around here. There's there's a great scene uh, in the last episode with. Uh, Bob Odenkirk, where he's giving that little speech where he's like, you know, I thought this was a place where you just say, you know, howdy neighbor, and you know, whatever, but uh, I never thought I'd have to think deep thoughts about things, <laughs> which which I like, but it's kind of like what No Country for Old Men kind of uh, ponders on as well, but I think No Country for Old Men is a little bit bleaker, well, while this, uh, along with, you know, the, the intense and, and thrilling aspects of it, um, it does, uh, with with the uh, Molly and, and Gus character and kind of their uh, relationship and forming their family, I think that provides uh, a very necessary antithesis to that so that you don't kind of come out of this show feeling bummed out, um, especially when bad things keep on happening, especially with Lester and Nygaard. even kind of feels a little bit sort of like Breaking Bad almost. Um, that, you know, Lester Nygaard, again, he's had this reawakening in his life, and he's kind of taking control and doing really despicable things. Like, geez, he, well, I mean, he kills his wife, for one thing, frames his brother for the murder. Uh, geez, I mean, he's, oh, heck, I mean, geez. Um, but uh, you kind of keep on waiting for him to get his comeuppance, however it may be. Will it be through uh, Malvo getting his revenge, sort of, um, or will it be through the police? Um, it does happen. Something happens in the end. I won't say exactly what, but it is pretty satisfying and at the same time kind of funny. Um, but it, it really kind of stays ahead of you, uh, this show. I mean, you, you kind of go in and expecting, okay, so it's going to end up like uh, like this. And uh, yeah, um, there's just like certain breaks in the show where you're like, okay, so it's kind of changed a little bit. We think it's going to be about one thing. Then it's, it turns out to be about another thing. Uh, like at like the seventh or eighth episode or so, um, no, like I'd say the eighth episode, uh, there's like a, a break where it goes one year later. And so you, you, know, you see kind of like the case has gone cold a little bit. They introduce new characters. Um, there's, you know, at, at first I was like, what's going on here? Because they do have uh, two FBI agents uh, played by uh, uh, Jordan Peele and uh, uh, Keegan-Michael Key, um, who, you know, they're, they're, they're more comedians. Um, so it was like, whoa, what, what are these guys doing here? But it turns out they have a nice little subplot. I was like, you know, is, is this really kind of what they're doing? But it, I, I thought it was pretty good. Um, and so, yeah, it's like a kind of cold case, like a hot case becoming a cold case, but then the case becoming hot again. Um, and it's very interesting stuff, especially when you see uh, how Lester Nygaard, Nygaard is kind of developing uh, as this character who we we were kind of sympathetic for in the beginning but now he's just kind of like you know i, I kind of hate this guy he's kind of a little prick um sort of so i don't know it's hard to say uh, exactly how to feel about uh lester nygaard of course you can't always love the main character um but as long as you find them interesting which i do find lester nygaard uh, quite interesting uh, as well as the other characters on the show very interesting um and so, yeah, I mean, it, it does come to a very satisfactory uh, conclusion. I thought, you know, it wrapped things up very nicely. Uh, it's it's hard to say where this show is going to go. Like, again, it is kind of an anthology thing. So are we going to get a, a completely new story? Or are we going to get, you know, some s similar characters coming back? Or I don't quite know. Um, seeing as how there is, like, kind of a year where, where things, you know, went cold and we don't know exactly what was happening in the character's life. So, like, we get, like, a general idea, basically. Um, 
it'd be interesting if, if they kind of went back in time a little bit, showed what we miss, sort of. Like, it would be very interesting to see what Billy Bob Thornton's character was up to, because you, you, when it hits that one year point, you know, one year later, you see him again, and you're like, what's going on here? Is Has he, like, turned turned a new leaf and is living a normal life? That doesn't seem like him. He's really, like, kind of go, like going undercover, sort of, to to find someone witness protection. So it'd be interesting to see what he does within that year. I think that'd be very uh, cool to see. And then there's an additional two years where we don't see what's going on with, with Lester Nygaard. So there's three years missing um, from the overall story, basically, which I think would be interesting to see. Um, but who's to say? Um, but I, I gotta say, uh, I'm very happy with this show. Uh, this is definitely gonna be something that uh, I'll wanna grab on Blu-ray when it comes out. Um, and kind of watch over and over again. Marathon, I think it very much well complements uh, uh, the original film, Fargo. Uh, keeps its spirit, but has a different execution, which is good. It's something different, um, something unexpected. Uh, so I uh, really, really like the show. Uh, I, th I think it's fantastic. Hope Billy Bob Thornton gets some Emmy love. Uh, ho hope the show in general gets some Emmy love. But uh, yeah. Uh, I gotta say, if you haven't seen it, hopefully I didn't spoil too much. Definitely check it out. Uh, it's well worth seeing. Um, so that'll be my review of FX's Fargo. A great show. So thanks for watching.